Hi guys, welcome back. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm glad I wasn't filming yesterday, it was horrendous. Today, we're talking about a controversial issue in farriery, and that is the wedge pad. Some people love it, some people hate it. I like it, as long as it's used in the right context and in the right conditions. And Indy behind me is the perfect horse for that. She's got broken back hoof pass and axis. She grows a lot of toe, she doesn't grow much heel, and our whole foot is run forward. So for that, by putting a wedge pad on, you move that foot angle back into alignment with that pastern, which then takes the strain off the tendons and the ligaments above, as well as taking some of the strain off the internal structure of the hoof. As well as that, she does go slightly foot sore, so a pad in itself actually helps her out with that. So at this point, the black stuff underneath the shoe is the magic cushion. A little bit of dirt and mud has got under there, but that's nothing to really worry about. The important part now is the prep. So the foot prep is where I remove any exfoliated sole or sole that should have exfoliated but obviously hasn't been under the shoe and then it also allows me to see what that foot's doing and all my proportions and where everything should be and where it isn't. So the question is, why are we using wedge pads on Indy's feet? This is Indy. Indy's aged, she's, she's over 20 now. Um, as horses get older, their feet do go downhill a bit. So with her, she's got a broken back hoof pass and axis, which is where the foot and the pattern aren't in alignment. And she grows a lot of toe, she doesn't grow much heel, and what heel she does grow runs forward underneath her. So the plan now is to reduce that toe height, reduce that heel height slightly so we get it back to a nice firm horn and then shoe her accordingly. You can also see that she's a lot wider on this inside than she is on this outside and she grows high inside and low outside. You can see that proportionally there's more foot in front of the widest part than behind. So we're going to use a leather wedge pad. Don't need too much of an angle. 
we just need to raise those heels up a little bit so that foot functions and acts as it should do in relation to the legs and the tendons and the ligaments. We're not putting any hard packing underneath, we're gonna use some magic cushion because all we need that packing to do is fill that void, stop that foot descending slightly and also to add an antibacterial part of that. So at this point, I'm drawing the clips up in the shoe to increase the clip height as the pad itself is obviously higher and thicker because it's a wedge pad and the clips need to complement that. And now I'm using a tool called a fuller to widen the outside branch of the shoe, allow me to fit with a bit more support to the outside of that foot, which complements the fact that it is the contracted side. So we followed the outside branch to create a bit more width there to give a bit more support. We've elongated the clips to fit the pad and now we're gonna burn on. I'm not cutting my clips in because when I put that shoe on, there'll be a pan in the way anyway, so I want that shoe to be slightly wider than I want it normally, which accommodates for the pad. So these are the leather wedge pads we're gonna be using. They're a mustard pad, I quite like them. They provide just enough of a raise in the heel area to do what I want them to do for, for this horse in this specific case. So, as we can see, if Indy kindly lifts her foot again, come on. That's a shoe on the foot. So this is before we're all finished and clench up. It's 
slightly and then swallow that. So guys, we achieved what we wanted to achieve with Indy. We're fighting the light a little bit, so we haven't done as much recording as we would have liked. We'll catch up with her maybe next year and maybe the time after and see how our feet are doing in those pads. They've been in there for a little while. Now, I know they're gonna work, but it'll be good for you guys to see how she gets on. Using a slightly bigger shoe than the foot knees in conjunction with the wedge pads means that we don't need to take the toe away as much which keeps that toe integrity there and allows us to achieve the correct hoof pattern axis or HPA of the feet which is in alignment with the shoulder and the pattern and so that foot can function properly that's all we're doing is allowing that foot to function properly hopefully you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and I'll see you next time